الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم عمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we thank our loving Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favors and bounties upon us and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and his forgiveness we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection and his acceptance and we beg our loving Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings unto his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and unto his household and his companions and unto all those who follow him. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all amongst the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we beg our Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are sick to purify them and grant them shifa, those who are in difficulties to grant them ease. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant victory to the Muslims all over the world. My dear gathering, the strength of our Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly connected to the strength of our love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when our love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam increases, so does our Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he says to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than anything except myself. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, None of you will believe until I am dearer and more beloved to him than his own self. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than my own self. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya Umar, now you have it. Now you are on the right track. My dear gathering, Nothing should take precedence above and in front of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in any Muslim feelings. Such is that love that it is a requirement of our deen and it's the foundation of all goodness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in Al-Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل إن كان آباؤكم وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين. Say unto them, if the things of this world if your 
fathers and your children and your brothers and your sisters and your spouses and your tribes and your wealth and your business and your homes and all your possessions if anything take precedence above Allah and His Rasul then Fatarabbasu this is a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wait and see what will happen and if any does that Wallahu la yahdil qawm al they will be counted among the wrongdoers and why why my brothers and sisters that that law for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should take precedence above the love of even our blood relations because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us an nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min ankusihim Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is closer to us and dearer to us and more beneficial to us and care for us more than we can care for our own selves. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cares so much for us that even for, more than 1400 years ago, he made dua for us. He asked, pray for our forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we love him so much because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen him above all of his creation to convey this beautiful message to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him that special status that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I will be the leader of Bani Adam on the day of judgment. Because Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by following him, we have an opportunity to enter Jannah and to be saved from the hellfire. And we can only do that by following Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By loving Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have an opportunity to enjoy and taste the sweetness of Iman. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Thalathun man kana fihinna wajada halawat al-Iman. There are three qualities. Whoever possesses them will taste the sweetness of Iman, will enjoy their Iman. And the first quality, an yakun Allah wa rasuluhu ahabba ilayhi mimma siwahima. That Allah and His Rasul is more beloved to Him than anything else. But my brothers and sisters, how do we demonstrate, how do we prove this love? And because of this love, this intense love that we have, whenever someone invents a lie or show disrespect, or insult our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we all feel that sadness and that heart. But how should we respond? How should we demonstrate and prove that love? And how should we respond when someone show disrespect, disrespect to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is it through violence? Is it through angry emotional demonstration? How should we demonstrate our love? My dear brothers and sisters, the most important way of proving our love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is true obedience. It's true following his guidance. It is true following that guidance that genuine love expresses itself. Because love is intense and its feelings can only be proven by action. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni. If you love Allah, then take action. Just don't say it. What's the action? Following Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We prove our love by obeying the commands of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if we are to ask ourselves and do an evaluation, can we truly say, we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through our actions or is it a lip service? Had Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam been with us today, would we make him proud through our actions? Can we prove our love in the way we treat each other, in the way we live with our family, with our spouse and children and our parents, in the way we conduct our business? In the way we treat non-Muslims and deal with non-Muslims. In the way we perform our job. 
How can we say we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But our heart is full with greed and pride and arrogance. How can we say we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But we sleep through Salatul Fajr. How can we say we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we are cruel to the children? And we have no mercy for the elders. And we have no respect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, فَلْيَحْذَوِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ Those who go against the guidance that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought, those who disobey him, be careful of a fitna, calamity and disaster and problem, and be careful of adabun alim, of a severe punishment. So to prove that we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first and foremost we need to follow and obey what he brought, which is the Quran and the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him with. Number two, my brothers and sisters, when you love someone, you remember them all the time. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا That whenever his name is mentioned, we say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We remember him all the time. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed angels that go around the globe and they convey the salam of my ummah to me. And he says, whenever someone from my ummah gives salam and says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. The angels convey that salam to me no matter where you are. So if we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remember him constantly. Number three, my brothers and sisters, when you love someone, you always want to be with them. You long to be with that person. And all of us should long to be with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And especially in the current circumstances with this pandemic, how many of us feel sad and hurt that we can't visit Medina and walk the footstep of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How many of us feel hurt that we can't go there and say, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah? But my brothers and sisters, we have an opportunity to be with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A companion asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, when is the day of judgment? And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, What have you done to prepare for that day? And he says, I love Allah and his Rasul. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, You will be with whom you love. So if we love Rasul Allah and long to be with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, Man yuti'illaha wa rasul فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالسِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Those who obey Allah and His Rasul, they have an opportunity to be with whom? Those whom Allah favors, مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ To be a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. So we long to be with whom we love. If we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would strive to serve humanity. Like Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what was his mission. To bring the message to us and to serve humanity. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had that caring and that compassion for us. Even during his time, his enemies, would bring their valuables and give him for safekeeping. Non-Muslims will bring their problems to him because of his care and his concern, genuine mercy for humanity. And one of the best examples, a story that most of us know, but whenever you, we hear about it, it brings tears to our eyes and it sends shivers down our spine. 
And that's the incident of Taif that teaches us how to deal with people who insult Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Taif, hoping that there would be people there that would listen to him after he just lost his wife and his uncle. But what he was met with in Taif was insult, disrespect. He was kicked out of the city. He was abused verbally and physically that his entire body was covered with blood. And when he went out of the city, he did not whine and complain. Instead, he thought, maybe I did not do something that is right. He complained about his own weakness. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel to give me the command that I can punish these people for what they have done to you, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of pure mercy for mankind, he says, maybe their children or those that come after will accept, will listen. And he chose peace over revenge. And this is an important lesson as we see in the world today. When people show disrespect to our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we do not respond with violence. But we respond with dialogue, with wisdom. And the best way to respond if it's us as Muslims can start following and show genuine love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with ourselves, with, in our homes, in our community. Because we cannot go and defend Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we are not following his commands in our homes. So if we genuinely love Rasul and we hate what is happening and we are hurt about it, then let us start with ourselves and our family. And if we genuinely love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will defend him, but not with violence, not with disobedience, not with harming others, but by educating ourselves about Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and start following his guidance, start waking up for Salatul Fajr. My dear brothers and sisters, if we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will love his companions and those who love him so much that they were prepared to give their lives. They did not want to see Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hurt by even a prick. They were willing to form a wall and take arrows on their bodies to protect Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were willing to give up their husbands. The women were able to their husbands and their fathers and their children to make sure Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is safe. So if we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would seek to emulate his companions and learn about them. It is sad today that we know the names of more Hollywood and Bollywood stars than we know the names of companions. How many of us know more than a handful of companions? It is sad that we know the lifestyle of NBA players and IPL players and the football players than we know anything about the companions of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to start to follow, to study the life of these real celebrities the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and emulate them. If we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would look at his morals and his character. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ He had the best morals and character and start to follow it in our lives, in the way we treat others, in the way we speak, in the way we walk. That Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he spoke to someone, he would turn his entire body and give full attention that that person, no matter who that person is, will feel as if he is the best friend of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
He would give full attention to children. He would care about even the non-Muslims, even people who hurt him and try to kill him. He would still have concern and inquire about their whereabout and their well-being. And if we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would seek to implement these qualities in our lives. If we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most important thing and what he brought to us, that gift that Allah sent him with, we will hold on to it. This is the gift that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought to us, Al-Quran. And if we say we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how much do we go to the Quran today? How much do we open it and read it and study it and try to understand it? And if we love and want to prove our love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will hold on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will hold on to our salah. It is sad, my brothers and sisters, that today shaitan has been successful in cutting us off from our roots. That we do everything. We have slogans, we sing praises, but we don't go to the basic and follow in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa If we genuinely love him, if we want to defend him, if we are hurt that other people are insulting him, let us do the right thing. Let us do the right thing by following his sunnah. By following what he brought to us, the value, the precious thing he brought to us, by following his example, by following his companions, and remembering him all the time. Aqulu kawli haza wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum alisa wa muslimin fa astaghfiruhu inna huwa ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi wahda. والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبعه إلى يوم الدين. My dear gathering, how can we follow and emulate someone if we don't know them? If we don't know him, how can we follow him? So I'm asking myself and you here today that the major takeaway from this khutbah, from this Friday, from this Jummah is for each and every one of us to make an effort to know Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many of us know Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know his name. We know when he was born and when he died. But do we know the most important things about him? How he lived with his spouses, how he treated them, how he treated elders and children, how he conducted business, how he treated non-Muslims, how he dealt with his neighbors, how he ate, and all the things in the life of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like the incident of Taif, that there are so many lessons in it for us. If we really love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let us make a commitment today that we will start learning about him. That's the best way of starting to defend him is to start learning who was Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was his life about. And there is no excuse. None of us have an excuse today. So much material available. So many teachers available, so many courses available, that none of us have an excuse today. Because studying the life of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam helps us to understand the Quran. The Salaf, those before us, they used to treat the seer of the life of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with such importance. That the same way they will teach their children to memorize the Quran, they will teach them the seerah. Because through that we understand the context of the Quran. So let us take some action today. Let this don't be a khutbah that we leave and say it was a good khutbah or was a bad khutbah. 
But take home some homework. There is a takeaway from this today that when we go, when we leave here today, we know that we have to start studying. That should be our priority. The life of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but not only reading and knowing about it, but learning it and implement it in our lives. That's the best way to prove our love for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the best way to start to defend him. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who genuinely love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to make us among those who follow Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who taste the sweetness of Iman, halawat al-Iman. I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all among those who drink from the howl of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all among those who will be with Rasul sallallahu Allah alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all among those who understand the life of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and emulate and follow Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qin a'adhaab al-nar. Allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Ibad Allah, ittaqu Allah. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبخل يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة